the prep school you attended Caldecott School, in which you were not involved, but some pupils were, and they fell prey to the activities of paedophiles, one of whom was sentenced to some eight years, the mm. former headmaster, mm. Peter Wright. Yeah, horrific. One of your contemporaries at the school, Ian McFadden, has been speaking to LBC. He's told us a horrific story of what he endured. I do remember him coming into the bathroom, and he took the soap, and he soaped up his hands, and he cleaned under my armpits, and... And he asked me to stand up, and and um, then it started explaining about um, hygiene, and um, and started cleaning underneath. And this is how the abuse started with him, um, and that progressed over a number of years. He enjoyed hurting me. He really took pleasure from it. it could, I could feel it. I've got a photo of you in your school days, nine or ten, and there's a chap to your left. Yes, that's. He's known now as the Deputy Prime Minister, Mr Nick Clegg, who was in my class and we played rugby together and we were friends, yeah. I know you haven't, um, you haven't seen Nick Clegg since you left school, but what would you say to him if he were here now? I'm passing the ball to you, you know. I've done my bit. I stood up five years ago and I opened my life up to the world. <clears throat> I had my private life, my family sexual life, my physical health and mental health discussed and a courtroom full of people of lawyers, you know, I've done my bit, you know, I've got people who, I have somebody who abused me who's no longer here, who's dead, I have another person in prison, I've done as much as I can do, um, so I pass the baton to you Nick, um, it's down to you as to what you can do to stop kids being hurt. None of it's done any, any of the boys who are, now <clears throat> who are now men any good, you know? There's a lot of damaged people out there. Um, please try and stop kids from getting hurt. It's important to stress, Mr McFadden said, Nick Clegg did not know what was going on. He was not affected. And he actually paid tribute to what a good bloke Nick Clegg was as a lad who helped Mr McFadden both on the classroom and on the rugby field. Apparently you were a very good friend to him. Mr Clegg. Well, it's incredibly distressing to hear that. Um, I think it's distressing to anyone who's listening to this. I find it, of course, particularly distressing. It's, what can it's, a government do, Mr Clegg? Oh, I think a government can do a fair number of things. Um, uh, as you know, the law has changed a lot since then. Um, the, the kind of uh, vigilance of local authorities, social services, the police politicians uh, all I think are quite quite different to what it was um, you know 30 30 30 40 years ago um, there is a debate uh, which we're looking at which is whether we can further strengthen the protections through um, well, basically passing into law a sort of mandatory requirement that if you suspect something's going on you report it and we're looking at it that frankly the the evidence is rather ambivalent some other countries have tried it and it hasn't really helped there's a little bit of evidence in other countries it might even stop people uh, uh, passing on information but but i mean that's just a practical issue which we need to look at and do whatever you know if the evidence shows that, that would help we must do it um but i have to say to ian uh, mcfadden uh, that uh, and i hope he knows this will have will have done a great great deal to protect children now and in the future because because his courage and that of other people victims who speak out like that in a strange kind of way is probably the greatest inoculation that we can have as a society against this kind of thing happening happening out of sight and out of mind and we did ask the liberal democrat leader nick clegg and former leader lord Steele for an interview but they were not available to appear on this program uh, we're joined now from Birmingham by the Liberal Democrat MP John Hemming. Uh, John Hemming, um, this is a sorry tale for humanity, let alone for the Liberal Democrat Party. Or the Labour Party, which were involved in talking to the DPP and stopping him being prosecuted. Yes, we, we need to look at this from the point of view of how we stop cover-ups. Because you've got this situation, you've got what happens with Hillsborough, you've got current things like Michael Doherty's case. And it, it's far too easy for powerful people to get away with wrongdoing and nothing be done about it. In this much more liberated period, we would have found out about it. Well, I, I am aware of things that are still kept secret by the use of court orders, for instance, criminal allegations which are being kept under wraps today. And obviously, your editor doesn't want to go to jail, so I can't mention them. We, we can paint this into some kind of kind of mass conspiracy. The real issue, surely, is is the particular party which seems to have had an awful lot of problems in this direction, 
i.e. yours, well, the, really getting to grips the, properly with it? Well, we need, we need to make sure that when people commit criminal offences, that there is a mechanism, not very happy at all with Nick Clegg, is that he blocked my um, private member's bill, which would have made it much easier for people to challenge a failure to prosecute. And so that the victims in these situations wouldn't have to wait 40, 50, 60 years for justice, but would be able to get it in the short term. And I think that's, that's what we need to be doing. We need to look at society and see how often these cover-ups happen. We also need to look at what, what the involvement of the security services in this. Were they involved also in Kinkora? I'm worried about what happened with Leah McGrath Goodman, who was banned from this country because she wanted to investigate Jimmy Savile. And that was before it became public. And I'm trying to investigate that at the moment. or seek criminal prosecution against their abusers, whether institutional or individuals. Victims have been pushing for this legislation in New York for well over a decade. Originally, churches and insurance companies were bitterly opposed to this legislation, but the church agreed to a compromise, as long as other private and public institutions could also be covered by the law, they would no longer oppose it, fearing naturally that this would open the floodgates to innumerable lawsuits. With all the money spent opposing this legislation, we spoke to one victim advocate who said that despite all of her political efforts, she never thought she'd see the day that this bill would become a law. It was really shocking to see how much money and how much time was spent against such an important bill to protect children. It's also a way to expose people that are still out in society doing exactly what they were doing 20 years ago. 